Hello students, welcome back to the class again. I hope by now most of you have got hold of your textbook because we will be needing these for references during the ongoing classes. We will be continuing with the same chapters as we had taken on the previous class that is on the story of the first cities, the Harappan archaeology. In the previous class, we have made a brief introduction on the civilization, the discovery, the extent and the area of the civilization and important features which signifies this civilization as an ancient urban society. In addition and as a supplement to the previous classes, we will be going on to some more important points that we will look into making this civilization unique. If you would remember, it has been already mentioned that this civilization had no record. All the studies has been carried out by a process of excavation, that is archaeology. The important point here to know or to understand is how come a big civilization like this was studied without a written record. For this matter, the first important point that we have to see is the discovery of the seals. It has been found that the Harappan civilization did not have a particular script or nor an alphabet, but the only way that they communicated, the, the only way that they, they recorded whatever lifestyle or whatever uh, process was going on in that civilization was made in the form of a seal that is the pictographic script. We will go into detail for this uh, particular language writing or the script writing. It is said that around 200 seals has been discovered in the whole area where the civilization took place. These seals were usually rectangular in shape and it was very well polished. In these 200 seals, 270 distinctive symbols. We can say those symbols were more or less like the 26 alphabets of the English what is being discovered, but the most puzzling factor is that these seals, the pictographic uh, script is yet to be deciphered by most of the scholars and the understanding of this script is still going on. Of these uh, 200 seals with 270 distinctive symbols, in addition to that, around 400 to 600 in thus symbols has been discovered and this has been found not only in the seals but in uh, different terracottas, ceramics and also pottery and this or a kind of a signboard that was usually hanged outside the city. Of the many seals that was discovered, we will see which was the most important. The most important seal that was discovered, there, were, there are three important seals here. One was called the Pashupati seal. The Pashupati seal or the Shiva, the Shiva seal. This was found in large numbers. And in this seal, there was a man with three headed. He was sitting very majestically with his cross legged in a very yogic style. So this is considered to be the most important seal because it also relates to a religious, uh, religious it relates to a religious seal. The second seal, which it was found to be very important was called the bull, bull seal. This seal, it is said, it is not found, it was not found in one or two pieces, it was also found in several pieces. To have a clear picture of this seal, you please turn to uh, page number 14 where you will find a number of examples where the picture has been posted about this bull seal. The bull, it seems, in the seal was very healthy and it was a Brahmi seal. The third important seal, which was very important, is the unicorn seal. I think all of the, uh, the stu you students also can understand what is a unicorn. A unicorn is a very imaginative animal. So we understand that the artists or the people of that ancient time, their imagination was very high and they had used a fantasy in the seal where a bull had one horn. This seal, we can say it is more on of an artistic seal. So by now, uh, so these three seals, 
is considered to be the most important seal of the 200. The question arises now, why is the importance of this seal? There are a few factors. We will see why these seals were important. The first important reason why this seal is important was because it is because of this seal. Since there was no record, written record, no paper, no pen, no alphabet, no script, that is why this seal is the only source of information that gives us a wide idea about the lifestyle of these people from A to Z. Besides excavating the buildings, the houses, everything, the record, is, the record of the lifestyle of these people is found through these seals. Second important factor why this seal is important was we come to know the study of this uh, civilization had contact with the outside world. With the outside world, how do we know it? It is said that the Harappan seals were found in Mesopotamia. And Mesopotamian seals, because in Mesopotamia also there was a great civilization, a great civilization flourished, so the Mesopotamian seals were also found in the Harappan region. This shows that these two civilizations had contact with each other and an exchange of this seal may be in the process of transaction of doing trade or business or other information. Thirdly, this seal is considered very important. This point is very important. Third point, this has a wide subject. The thirdly, why this seal is very important is because this seal has made uh, the scholars and researchers to make a very wide study to understand the writing and the script, how it worked. Because of the non-availability of the written records, the scholars or researchers they are still yet to understand what type of language was spoken by the Harappan civilization or the, during the Harappan civilization. It is believed by a group that they might have used this pictographic seal, taking the idea from Egypt or from Sumeria. Some say that this seal was used, some say that this seal may have been used uh, in order in a more or less like a Sanskrit language might have been spoken, or some conclude that this language was a proto-Dravidian language. But there is no definite conclusion as to exactly what was the main language that was spoken, that was portrayed in this different seal or the pictographic script. Another style that we know through this seal is that uh, the writing sometimes went from right to left, and sometimes it was written from left to right. Right. So this, uh, this pattern of writing also creates a kind of a confusion to understand why there was a reversal of writing sometimes in writing their script. So class, I hope you understand why these seals are important. Uh, in modern day, we have a lot of documents. We have the alphabets to find out, to have a written record. We have the technology, we have audiovisual aids, different, uh, different aids or objects to have a written record. But to understand the Harappan civilization, this was the only, this was the only particularly object that, that we have to understand the written records. Next, we will see on the society. Such a big civilization had existed, and this civilization will run only because of the people or the society. Without society, there would have been no, uh, there would have been no civilization. Uh, so we, in order to understand the society, there is a certain, the archaeologists, they follow certain pattern. And this is called social tracing. Social tracing like right now, which we're having in the COVID outbreak. Social tracing, in order to see the differences, different classes. Different classes in the sense, high class, middle class, or the lower classes. But before we get into the class, understanding the different classes, the Harappan civilization, we can say that the idea of Varna, division of the Indian society, was yet to be implemented. Tracing, in order to trace social, uh, the social tracing, the archaeologists follow two patterns. How do you find out 
whether in a city or a center that there was a rich class population or a poor class population or a middle class population. The first method that they used was by digging out the burial grounds. This, this is not a very interesting subject because it concerns about digging the dead body, but it is a study that is included in archaeology. Main reason why this burial is, was carried out was the Harappan people, they had, the, they had a culture or they had a, a practice where they believed that after the death, they will keep some object around the dead body where the dead can carry it in their afterlife. So when a lot of burial grounds in different places uh, around the civilization was ducked out, they found a number of items. In some burials, they found copper mirror, a mirror that was made out of, uh, with a, uh, that was made out of copper. They also found objects, uh, stylish objects like jewelries or ornaments uh, besides the dead body of a woman. And even in men also, they kept ornaments. And also, they, were, they found a, uh, some semi-precious stones like jaspers and uh, rings of shells. And this identification of the object around the dead body shows that probably this man belong or this woman belong to a poor community or, a, he, came, or he or she came from a higher uh, class or strata of the society. So burial grounds became very important. Second method that the archaeologists, in order to study the social and the economic differences in the society was by identifying or classifying the goods that was found around the dead body by making it into utilitarian goods and uh, utilitarian goods and luxury items. The utilitarian goods were ordinary, everyday use, everyday materials that was found around the dead body. In some dead bodies around the burials, you've, uh, they found out the uh, luxury items. These luxury items were materials that were very costly, or those products were made out of a very complicated method, or that met, uh, the materials of the object was not local. They might have been brought from a long distance places. So this is how the identification of different classes in the society was car is carried out in the study by the archaeologists. After understanding the social trans traces, we will look into the economy. After the archaeologists or the study is conducted, trying to understand that certain class of people did exist in that society, it is very important to understand the economic life of the society. Because economic life de determines the prosperity of a particular civilization. And this economic life, we can determine it by the different professions that was carried out by the people during that time. Some of the important uh, profession that was carried or practiced by the people of that time were agriculture, domestication of animals, hunting and fishing, and also trade and commerce. And you will, it is said that there was art and craft industry and Lastly, a very important point to know the prosperity of a civilization was true, weights and measure. These six points comprise the economic life of the Harappan society. In the weights and measure, it, has, it is said that the Harappans they had develop, have already developed a very uh, standardized form of weight, weight and measurement scale. They had already had an idea what was cubic feet in measuring. And then the most important part, since by the discovery of a dockyard at Lothal, it is said that there was transaction of goods from outside and inside. Uh, from coming in from the inland in the mainland India as well as from outside. This shows that a lot of transaction in business was carried out. So weights and measure became very important. It is said that for weighing, and it is said that for weighing, the large weighing stones were, could be pulled only by the ropes, whereas the smallest one, the smaller one were used by the jewelers. 
the shape of the large uh, measuring stones were cubical, uh, cubical um, conical, sorry, conical, and the smaller ones were cubical in shape. The poor sections also, the poor section of the society, it is said, also had an idea of the weight in measures. So the poor section, usually they use pebbles, small, small pebbles as they, in their weighing scale. So, and it is, it is to be remembered that because of weight and measurements, the exact weight of measurements, we can have an idea that the business progressed. And this led to more prosperity and having a high income that led to the building of such massive cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. In the field of the economic life, when we uh, come to hunting and fishing, which is carried out even today. This hunting and fishing was done for livelihood purposes. And the bones, the skin, and the hair of the animals were procured for selling, maybe for medicinal purpose or for maybe for the, uh, other reasons that we are yet to know. Domestication, in the domestication of an uh, animal, they domesticated a number of animals for meat and for getting milk. But to our amazement, the Harappan civilization, though they have, might have traveled a lot, they never domesticated the horse, which is a question mark, how they might have carried all their goods around. So class, I think it is clear for you to understand how the economic life progressed during this time. We have seen social, social life, we are seeing the economic life. Now we have come to a very simple point that is called subsistence strategies. Subsistence strategies. Though the, this particular word might sound very difficult to understand, yet it is a very simple point. Here in the subsistence strategies we will find the lifestyle, everyday food habits, how the people live during that time. And we have a number of points that we can look into to understand this subsistence strategy. One, there are students, please be ready. There are 10 points to understand under the subsistence strategies. Food, dress, fashion, ornaments, Position of woman, household articles. Please uh, turn to page number 16 to get all the headings clear for you students if, if you're holding your textbooks. Medicines, education, and lastly, disposal of the death. This is the everyday lifestyle of the Harappan people that happened 5,000 years ago. It is said that their food was very simple. They had vegetarian diet mostly. And besides that, they ate fruits. And there was also a non-vegetarian group where they had where they ate meat, and it is said, uh, this we come to know, how do we come to know they ate meat is through the discovery, uh, through the excavation of the bones and of the, uh, of the meat and the fish. Bones of deer, wild boar, and gharial. Gharial is the, uh, what do you call it, Indian deer that was, the bones of this were found, and is pro probably it was consumed by some group or section of the society. For dress, the men, they wore a kind of a dhoti and they had a shovel, they put a shawl on their shoulder. And for the woman, it was kind of like a sari where they had a wrap around their waist and hanged it in their head. It's very interesting to know that uh, uh, Harappan people were very stylish people. And this fashion was more inclined towards the men rather than the woman. The men, it seems they, they, had, they, they, they had a very modern look. This, 
men mostly they had beard and whiskers, and some men they just had beard and have their upper lip shaved. Some men had very short hair, some combed their hair backwards, and in most cases the men had long hair and they put a bun on top of their head. Whereas for the woman, even if they had a long hair, the women were made to wear, cover their head with a cloth or with a head dress. So that was the difference that we see on the fashion during, that was carried on on the life, uh, that was carried, that was practiced during the time. Position of woman, gender equality was somewhat practiced because we see that there is a female goddess, Mahadevi, and then women were also respected, uh, and in some cases they were equal to men. The household article, that is the everyday, everyday articles that was used by the because since it was an urban civilization of the ancient world, they were they used a lot of household items. I have discussed that yesterday or in the previous class where the pottery, vest, vest, whatever was used. So I just want to add one point here, a new material that was porcelain. Porcelain was used in their kitchen wares. Another important point you have to see in the everyday life that was going on was in medicine. It is said that uh, it is not very known whether they use a wide range of medicine, but the Ayurvedic or the herbal medicine was used by these people like neem, coral, and shilajit leaves, and powdered horn of animals were used for medicinal purposes. In the field of education, here, please put a note. The Harappan civilization, yet we, they, we do not, there is no traces, it seems, for whether there was a center for, of learning, an institution or a school or a college. But it is said that most of the population where the literacy rate was very high. How? Because of the number of seals that was discovered, the picrographic script was known to the population. And we also come to know that their, its education, uh, their system of learning was very good from the way they had planned their city already, from the way they led their life, from the way they had carried out their weights and measurement. So in a way, we can indirectly say they were good mathematician, physics, chemist, or they, were, they had a very wide knowledge in fine arts also by the way they made their potteries and the art and craft industry. Another point in the subsistence uh, in the subsistence tragedy or the everyday lifestyle was in the field of uh, art and craft industry. The most important uh, industry was uh, jewelry making, especially gold, copper, and this jewelry making by the jewelers, it is said it was very polished and very well refined. And a scholar has commented that this jewelry, gold jewelry, and sometimes that was studded with precious I, uh, precious stones, it can be compared to a very Bond Street jewelry store of today also. So class, I hope this has been clear to you. It's very simple. It's, if you look at your textbook, you'll have more simpler topics. It, you'll find it more simpler, simpler to understand if you read your textbook. And this is by developing a regular reading habit. Every civilization like the Egyptian civilization, Sumerian civilization, or the Mesopotamian civilization, every civilization has a beginning and it has an end. And for this matter, we will see, see that the civilization, the, uh, the Harappan civilization, which had reached the highest point, also began to decline at a certain point. Yesterday, I have uh, in the previous class, the mention between 1600 to 1900, we have seen it as a most matured period of the Harappan civilization. There, in the chronology of the decline, the period between 1900 to 1300 BC is considered to be the late phase or the decline period of the civilization. It was between these 600 years that the gradual signs of fading out of this civilization began. There has been a lot of study how this particularly big civilization came to an abrupt end and how it was lost completely. 
We will look into that matter one by one. According to Dr. B.G. Gokel, he said that men and nature combined together might have completely led to the destruction of this civilization. But a recent research, they try to argue that this civilization might have continued up to 800 years, even after the decline of the civilization. And maybe this, and though the big centers like Mohenjo-daro and Harappa might have been destroyed by 1300 BC, the remaining small, small, small centers might have continued where their culture might have got mixed up with the Vedic culture. The Vedic culture came right after this civilization. So these are some of the views given by uh, historians about the decline of the civilization. But in your textbook, if you turn to page number 22, you will find there are around six points that has been given about the complete decline of this civilization. One, floods, famine, earthquakes, change in the river, course of the river in dust, invasion of the Aryans, and a natural end of the Harappan civilization. So the flood, the flood, not the flood that is written in the Bible, the 40 days flood, but a certain flood that might have been caused because Indus River was a very unpredictable river. Of, it might have caused the water in a very gigantic manner, to come in a gigantic manner and completely cover the whole of the civilization with water and mud, covering it with mud and silt and bury, getting it buried under the ground. Another was famine. Famine, how do we argue this? When it is a river civilization, how could a famine come? But it is believed that maybe in Sindh, which is now in Pakistan, where Mohanjotaro, the city, flourished, maybe the rainfall became so scanty that Sindh became a desert land, and people, be, uh, uh, people were so hungry because of no cultivation was carried out, and there was a famine that the whole population began to migrate to different places. Third is earthquake, a natural calamity, which might have opened the earth and completely swallowed up the whole civilization. In thus river and its distrib distributaries, when they change their course, a river course changes, they might have swallowed up the whole of the civilization settlement, disturbing the whole settlement. Fifth, Aryan invasion. This is an important point because Aryans were a warrior race. They came from Himalaya and completely subjugated the Harappan civilization. Harappan people, Mohanjotaran people, they were, it seems, a very peace-loving people. They did, not have any, they did not have a warrior blood in them. They were very gentle and refined, whereas the Aryans had the opposite characteristic of having conquering by war and having a very tribe, a very warrior-like character in them. So the Aryans came and destroyed the civilization. Probably that is one case. And the end of the Sarapan civilization is, it might have been a natural state. Slowly and gradually, everything around the civilization might have gone down step by step, losing its important features. So class, this is how the civilization ends. You can also check your Google and check uh, the internet to have more points on the uh, disappearance of this civilization. The last point is on the legacy. Civilization, this civilization left a big legacy. The legacy, legacy is something that is carried on from generation to generations. And we will look what kind of legacy was left by this particular civilization. The first important legacy that was left behind by this civilization is, uh, it's a very, uh, we can say it's a little uh, upside down point, but the Aryans who came and destroyed the civilization, the Aryans themselves, they adopted, they learned, they copied a lot of their Harappan culture and was implemented into their next uh, stay in India. They continued to stay in India with the Harappan culture. The most important legacy that was left behind by the 
civilization is it had a big impact on Hinduism. The practices of religion by this civilization, like the worship of the different gods, especially Shiva and Shakti, and the, wor and the worship of different animals, is, was carried down, is carried down to Indian religion today. And this, we can say, is a very big contribution that was given to Indian religion in the field of Hinduism. Besides all these legacies, the study of this civilization is never ending, and then it has contributed a lot to the cultural studies of the ancient world for Indian history. So class, I hope uh, this, uh, this is clear to you. We have come to the end of this chapter. And, but before uh, we go to the next chapter, I would like to ask the students to kindly write a note. Please turn to page number 24. There is a long answer note, question one, two, and three. As an assignment, kindly write a note on that. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next class. Again, I am saying uh, stay safe by staying indoors and carry out your student duty by staying at home. Thank you.